Hi there. Welcome to Kali and the Gardener. Please remember to hit subscribe, like our videos, and continue watching. It's mid-March. I keep saying that for this video series, but we're cleaning out the garden bed, and I want to show you how easy it is to get this garden started. I practice the same sort of process for each garden bed that I'm starting. And since it's ranging from 28 degrees in the morning to 50 degrees in the afternoon, it's still a little breezy here. We're kind of focusing in on starting those spring vegetables, getting them going. And spring vegetables to me are things like asparagus, maybe some of my herbs I want to start waking up. Um, I did a video on green onion. I'll put the link below. And today I'm gonna to be focusing on my carrot bed. I always try and get that ready early, get the seeds down in place and get that warm and going because carrots do take a little bit of time to germinate and need just the right amount of light and temperature. So it's good to get that bed set up and then when it reaches that ideal, both temperature and sunlight ratio, it's gonna start taking off. And this bed I've had had right now that I'm standing across for about three years and I know most people recommend practicing crop rotation but for me with this garden space I have a lot of perennials and I have a lot of beds that just cannot be changed over so I kind of practice my lasagna method that I start each spring of placing a big layer of compost two layers specifically just to add volume to the soil take care of any depleted sort of nutrients I'll fertilize once this spring with a bone meal, blood meal, and organic fertilizer blend. And then I'll tuck everything in, I always say with its down comforter of compost again. And I specifically use mushroom compost. I'll have the links for all of those things that I use below. The seeds for carrots that I'm gonna be using today are from Baker Creek Seed. And I'm just putting a different blend of carrots in through here. And the great thing is once they get going, they all come to a harvest time at different times. So we're just looking for the biggest and plucking it out and using it on our kitchen table. And once carrots get going, they can stay in the ground till first frost. That's sometimes when they're the sweetest. So a garden bed about this size really can feed our whole family and friends for the entire season. And I'm just planting one time. If you wanted to succession plant, you know, certainly as things warm up and you want your harvesting in one specific location, you can throw some more seeds down, put another layer of compost over them and let the process begin again. Because I practice in a companion style planting in my garden, and that means I'm using plants that work really well together and enhance the health of each plant that's planted in each bed. I want to think about what else can go in this garden bed. And for me, it's always been my practice to grow tomatillos in this bed. Tomatillos need to be started when the temperature is really warm outside. And sometimes I'll start those as little seed starts about six to eight weeks ahead of frost. I'm going to be starting those with my tomatoes pretty soon and then I'll transplant them into some bare spots as I'm pulling tiny baby carrots out and adding them as cute little treats to our salads. That being said, when you are adding things like tomatillos, I try to practice a variety of planting. Tomatillos will pollinate and fertilize their flowers much better if they have different types of tomatillos. If you've ever grown tomatillos and you plant the same plant in a row together and you just seem like you're having a low yield or you're not getting much out of them, the reason for that is you need a little variety. So if you're growing maybe a green tomatillo, I might try a purple one next to it. It's gonna draw in those pollinators. They're gonna cross pollinate between plants. Your yield is gonna go up. You might even get some interesting cross-pollination and some interesting fruiting from it. But tomatillos are those great garden vegetables to have, and they do really well with carrots. And the reason why I love companion planting there is they'll get really bushy by the end of the summer, and it helps provide shade for those carrot greens. It also helps to lock in some moisture for those carrots as they're developing as well so the soil doesn't dry out. So it's a good way to continue using this bed and not just devoting it to one crop. 
And then of course, we're trying something new this year. I always grow with companion style flowers. I wanna draw in those pollinators. But this year, rather than planting my generic marigold, nasturtium, I'm going to add color blocking to each bed. So in the bed next door, when I did my green onions, I went for more of like a salmon pink and then the asparagus bed that we did earlier in the season. We went for a yellowy orange and anything combines beautifully with green. And so I haven't decided yet. By the end of the video, we'll decide what flower color we're going to plant in this area with the carrots. Um, I have a bunch of flowers I've ordered from a different seed companies and it's really the great time to add your seeds into the ground now along with the carrots. That way they can grow and develop at the same time as your carrots and this bed is kind of coming to life. If I'm using a seed package it usually only costs about three to four dollars for sometimes 30 to 50 seeds as opposed to buying the flowers in the store and adding something established, which I certainly can do if I fall behind or I'm noticing there's a bare spot. It's usually about three to $5 at the store for one plant. And so I try my best to give myself a little insurance, add those seeds into the ground right now. And then I'll come back if there's, like I said, a bare spot, I might've started some marigolds or something like that and we'll add it in. Um, Aside from that, this bed was pretty much harvested right before winter hit and winter came really early for us. We didn't have much fall. So there's not much of a cleanup to do in this bed. There are some carrots that have kind of sat in the ground that we might have missed. And I'm gonna till those up actually. They'll be great to feed to my chickens. They're not gonna be that tasty to eat right now, starting in spring and they've been sitting in the ground all winter. Um, just to get that ground loosened. I don't always practice tilling the ground that I'm gonna be planting in, but because we're gonna be planting with carrots, I wanna make sure that their roots can grow really long and straight and they have plenty of room for that growth. And so I'm gonna be loosening up the soil in that way, adding in the compost, and then fertilizing. And then before I add my last layer of compost, I'm gonna be adding those seeds in that we had talked about earlier. Aside from that, we'll be adding mulch on the sides because nothing makes a garden look more beautiful than mulch. And this bed will be all taken care of and done and it'll just slowly start to germinate on its own and we'll definitely plant some updated posts as things start blooming and growing. So make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button down below, liking everything, watching other videos. It's a great time to get started in your garden for spring. Come join me. The boundaries of this bed I know are lined with landscaping fabric and then there's a layer of mulch on top. That helps to kind of keep everything looking neat and in place. It also keeps weeds low from entering into the garden bed that I want to do and it keeps those carrot seeds kind of in place in the soil area. So I just want to pause for a moment and show you, I'm going to kind of pan in here, here and show you what the bed looks like. Not a deep till. There wasn't much organic material to break up in there. Not too many carrots that we missed. But the dirt looks really dark. You can see the compost that's still in there. You can kind of see where that mushroom compost was starting to form a fungus colony. And normally you don't want to break that up. You can so you can see where there was this white area on this organic material. That's where the fungus is helping to break it down, turn it into further compost, things we've introduced, which is why it's great to add that element to the garden. And the dirt here looks so black and rich from two years now. We're coming on our third year of growing in this garden bed, continuing to grow the same crop can be wearing on it. And so we're gonna to continue to add further compost, reintroducing new food essentially to the fungus that's growing in here and for our plant. But we're also gonna introduce that element of organic fertilizer, blood meal and bone meal just to balance things out in case something was out of balance after the end of the season. But it's looking really nice. Now, normally I wouldn't disturb this fungus. I'd let it go. It's not too happy. Usually when you disturb it, it'll start growing again. 
and I wouldn't till. I'd just continue to pile on top of it. But like I said, carrots are a little different for me. I am gonna break up that soil in case it's hard so we get nice straight roots and things are growing uniformly. But that's what it looks like now that we've tilled everything. Just following that line of the fabric, the landscaping fabric and the mulch. So our next step will be to add that first layer of compost, kind of get everything smooth and flat. And then I'm gonna add the fertilizer. All right. So we're done now with placing that first layer of compost down. I'm sure some of you are wondering where that collie is in the background. For this step, I'm gonna be using bone meal to help incorporate some calcium, magnesium, phosphorus into the ground. And Rory, our rough collie, simply cannot resist getting into it. So once it's covered with that second layer of compost, he usually leaves it alone. But in the process of this fertilization, he had to go take a nap right now. And I'll try and incorporate some video of that because he's just hysterical when he's sleeping with his legs up in the air. But you can see that the bed is totally taking shape, similar to the bed next to it. Time to place bone meal for calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Time to place that blood meal to add nitrogen back to really grow up those greens. And time to add some organic fertilizer back into the ground. This will be the only time I fertilize, like I've said so many times before in our videos. So we've got to do it right. You'll see me put down a heavy, thick layer of each of them. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. We're going to take a little tour. You can see now that bone meal layer, blood meal, organic fertilizer is down on top of our first layer. We added some volume with our first layer of compost. We're going to add a little more to tuck in those baby seeds. Keep watching. We talked about growing a different variety of things to help with that companion planting and in the bed behind me that we've worked so hard to get ready, I'm gonna show you the seeds I'm gonna be planting first. We're gonna be growing carrot seeds from Baker Creek or rareseeds.com, same company, that's just their website. I love their carrot options. And the big thing to remember is when you're growing carrots, there's all different types, but I only grow the ones that have the best tasting descriptions because there are really fancy ones but I find when I've tried them once or twice in an organic grocery store they're not that great or when we've tried growing them here not that great and you've wasted a lot of time and space dedicated to something that looks fancy but isn't really practical or something you're going to eat so only plant what you're going to eat so since I never know what's going to do best sometimes weather temperature can have an effect on things. A pest could be introduced and really cause some sensitivity to some of the plants we're growing. I try and grow a variety of the same thing that I like. So we'll be growing three different types of carrot seed. It's kind of windy today. And just giving those a try and that's kind of my way of trying something new in the garden introducing it by growing with lots of seeds i get to introduce things that ordinarily would not be something you could just buy at your average box store when you go onto those magazines you could try different nurseries and seed catalogs and see what they have a lot of it that works well is always repeated but and then we had talked about tomatillos. So I'm gonna grow three different types of tomatillo slash husk cherry in my garden. And we talked about some of them may grow, some may not grow very well. Some of them may help enhance the pollination of other ones just by being present, drawing in more pollinators. And so I have grown once before a couple years ago, growing husk cherries. They taste like little bites of pineapple when you're eating them and they're just one of those things you come out and you snack on in the garden. They're super sweet, but they're in that family of tomatillos. So they will be a helpful enhancer of pollination, both for themselves and for the other plants. Last year, I grew just a generic green tomatillo plant. 
And so I'm gonna grow it again, it worked really well. And then this year I'm gonna try something a little different. I thought it looked super cool, the yellow variety. And I love growing tomatillos because you can freeze them, make them into salsa, soups later on in the season. So it's not something you have to eat immediately. It stores really well throughout the year. And then finally, you know, we're talking about drawing in pollinators earlier. The best way to enhance your garden is planting flowers. It makes it look gorgeous. If you want to take your garden to the next level, you know, making sure the soil and what you're planting your seeds in is really important. But what you can do above the ground is equally as important. And so adding those pollinators in is essential to companion planting as well as for the health of those pollinators. And when we were talking about color blocking, I'm doing a different color each time. It'll make great cutting flowers, awesome pollinators. And so my seeds for flowers that I usually go to are park seeds. They have a huge variety. I'll have their link below too. We're going to be growing Zinnia Queen Lime. And then I thought something ethereal and fun would be growing Cosmos. Cosmos just look fairy tale like when they grow and they get really tall and they're just going to totally draw in those pollinators to this area and make for an awesome cutting garden either just in this row with the green and the pink or in other areas of the garden, it's gonna draw your eye up and add sort of a depth of scale to the garden for something that might be very low to the ground. And so I'm gonna plant all of those seeds now. And I know you're saying like, you're planting tomatillos so early, but what I've found is previous year's tomatillos that fell and decomposed and left their seeds have sent up the healthiest and strongest volunteers in my garden. And so that being the case, I'm gonna give it a try. We're definitely gonna have some insurance. I'm gonna start them inside as seeds with our germination method, but I'm gonna put some out here, see what it does. That's the beauty of this garden, trying to make it one step, trying to make it easy for everyone to say, I can do that. So this is the time to add the seed, and then I'm gonna add my last layer of compost, and we're gonna call it good on this garden. And when you're growing companion style, things can grow together pretty tightly, I find. One, it keeps your weeds down, which is awesome. But two, they're growing successfully together. They're benefiting each other. And so they grow taking up less space away and competing less with one another. So I think that's great. And I just love the look of it. It kind of gets a little wild at the end but I have great organic matter to compost at the end of the season. I'm getting huge yields out of beds that aren't just dedicated to one crop and done, and then I've got to come back and add a new seed to it. We're making the most of this one-time planting season where carrots can be produced at all different times, tomatillos are gonna take over at the mid to late summer and really get going. And so this one little space is gonna produce a lot for my table. And so finally, we're gonna add that last layer of compost and then we're done.